This video is sponsored by nobody because I'm small. However, I do have a novel on Amazon and Kindle. Find it in the link in the description below. I'm making this video with the understanding that Mr. House is a single character in the game Fallout New Vegas, and not technically a faction. Though he might as well be. He has an economy, a city, a military, and diplomatic power, making him on par with any other faction in the Fallout series. See, his diplomatic power comes from three casino houses that rule under him. You got the Omertas at the Gamora Casino, who certainly have no love for Mr. House, but one doesn't have to love a leader to serve under him. Then there's the White Glove Society at the Ultralux. They certainly have their own vicious appetites, but of the three casinos, they're the most content living under Mr. House. Then you have the chairman at the Topps Casino. Aside from Benny, who is secretly scheming against Mr. House, the majority of people at the Topps are actually rather content in their situation. After all, these families were given a really good hand by being put in charge of the Strip. Mr. House also has diplomatic alliances with the NCR, who recently came to New Vegas. See, Mr. House is a faction for the same reason New Vegas is a faction. But Mr. House offers something that no other faction in the Mojave does, immortality. This lack of aging has given Mr. House a reason to focus on goals that expand beyond a single life, a perspective other factions simply don't have. NCR politicians struggle to see beyond the terms of their election. Caesar may believe himself to be immortal, but he will eventually die and be replaced by a general that will eventually die. All the while, Mr. House remains. Even the most honorable faction leaders will struggle to see beyond their own lives. Meanwhile, Mr. House is setting up plans that will persist through centuries. After all, what other faction leader discussed their plans to reignite the advancement of technology and to travel to distant planets in search of a better home for the human race? That's not something you'll get with the Brotherhood of Steel, NCR, Caesar's Legion, or any other faction that's too focused on their immediate victories to see the value of such long-term ambitions. Now, to be fair, Mr. House isn't the only character that has become immortal. John Henry Eden of the Enclave is an immortal character, though he's a software that was never really meant to control anything other than a US military base called Raven Rock. After centuries of isolation, this software began to take the personalities of US presidents and sought to restore the United States to its former glory by any means necessary. See, much like the NCR, John Henry Eden only offered a return to the failed past. It sought to fix the derailment of America. But unlike the NCR, John Henry Eden can be overridden and set to self-destruct with a single authorization code. It was also vulnerable to self-destruct after encountering a simple logic loop about its own existence. These aren't exactly the traits of a long-lasting dictator. But even if there was a way to resolve these software flaws, John Henry Eden's entire mission had a major flaw in it. It believed the only way to restore the USA was to proliferate a virus into the drinking water. If successful, this would eliminate all creatures, humans included, that were affected by radiation, aka all non-vault dwelling and non-enclave human beings. Which means essentially every human being in the immediate area would have been wiped out. For a software that's based on logic, this is a pretty illogical thing to do. I mean, after all, even the most inhumane dictator could see the people of the capital wasteland, much like those of the Mojave, are valuable and could aid in the right cause if they're just properly motivated. Mr. House understood this. That's why he made New Vegas a carrot to attract the masses, where their bottle caps could fund his endeavors for years to come. He didn't fight humanity, he motivated them. Another immortal character is Harold, a ghoul who has lived for centuries without losing his mind to the radiation poisoning that caused most other ghouls to go feral. However, he seems to have no ambitions or ability to rule over anyone. Poor guy kind of just wants to stop living. Super mutants are also immune to aging. And while most of them are too stupid to rule over anyone, Marcus, another super mutant in New Vegas, is quite old and not only maintained his senses, he is far above the intelligence and temperance of most humans, let alone most super mutants. If you're looking for another benevolent dictator, eh, you might could give him a try, though he lacks control of an army of military robots. Another immortal being is the master of Fallout 1. He's the closest thing we had to a long-lasting dictator, he didn't age, he was intelligent, and great at inspiring his followers. Except he was only interested in helping super mutants. Which is fine if that's what you are, but I'm more interested in a leader for mankind. And while Mr. House is dependent on machinery to stay alive, he is still a man and is devoted to preserving the human race. 
There is a sad conclusion that someone can reasonably arrive to in the world of Fallout, and that is that democracy has failed. The people who lived in the world before the bombs fell had democracy, and with it elected leaders who brought the destruction of the entire world. Or perhaps you blame someone else or something else for that destruction. After all, we don't actually know for certain who shot first. That's fine if you do, but it still means that under democracy's watch, the world ended in destruction. Billions ceased to exist, and the species nearly went with it. Quite the failure, if you ask me. The NCR expanding into the Mojave would bring with it the systems of the old world, all the good and the bad. This would certainly improve the lives of all the people living in the NCR's borders, who would have more security and a democratic vote over who leads them. But how long would the world have before its leaders led humanity to the same fate it did under the last democratic rule? Would this cycle of destruction and rebirth be the new norm for humanity? Mr. House offers an alternative to the old world. He experienced life before the war, where he saw the technological progress of humanity. He even contributed to that progress through his robotic company, Robco. He also got to experience the derailment of this technology as he predicted the destruction of the world and made preparations to save the home he called Vegas. He succeeded, though not perfectly. For centuries, he struggled to keep control of the systems he set in place, as well as preserve his own life. During this time, he watched as humanity crawled out of the vaults and attempted to reestablish society. He foresaw the coming of an organized army, which came in the form of the New California Republic and Caesar's Legion, both of which are fighting to take control of Hoover Dam, as well as the city of Vegas, which Mr. House preserved. Mr. House has wisdom all the other leaders can't obtain. He has personal knowledge from before the war, and he has seen the rebirth of humanity firsthand. In the Fallout universe, democracy has failed. It may very well be that it could fail again in the exact same way. Perhaps humans are just too corrupt, distracted, or simply incapable of electing leaders that can guarantee the safety of the people who elected them. Mr. House summarizes this well when he tells the Courier, if you want to see the fate of democracies, look out the window. And I ask you, the player, where is he wrong? The destruction brought about by democracy, or under the rule of democracy, is present everywhere in New Vegas. Could this destruction have been prevented if the world had one leader who was not held back by the short-sightedness of a single lifetime? Would the world have been safer under Robert House? Even the biggest critics of Mr. House can't argue against his intelligence. I mean, the man became a billionaire. 30 times over, before he was 30, predicted the end of the world when the world's governments didn't see it coming, and set in motion a plan to prevent the destruction of the city he called home. His greatest strength is his ability to create and understand mathematical predictions. Through the game, he is constantly one step ahead of his opponent because he's able to predict what they're going to do before they do it. He predicted the NCR's arrival in the Mojave. He predicted that Caesar would summon the courier and return the platinum chip. He predicted that President Kimball would not survive his visit to Hoover Dam unless the courier interfered. See, his intelligence gives him an edge that the other faction leaders simply don't have. Now, intelligence is not the same as morality. These two traits, unfortunately, have no correlation whatsoever. Pam is a robot that can make mathematical predictions to rival Mr. House, but her intentions are completely amoral. She simply predicts whatever outcome her user asks of her. The master made many predictions, as he led his army of super mutants and wiped out countless humans in the process. And this leads me to my next point, that Mr. House, unlike many of the other faction leaders, works in the best interest of the human race. As I said before, intelligence and morality have no correlation whatsoever. Caesar is undoubtedly intelligent, so is Arcade Ganon. Yet the two arrive at two completely different moral positions. One is a research assistant that finds his own work a bit boring, but does it with the goal of improving the lives of the people of Freeside. The other leads a nation of slavers. Mr. House, however, mentions time and time again how he is the best hope for humanity and how he will lead humanity to a better future. Now, critics will claim that these are the words of a narcissist attempting to fool the courier into believing that Mr. House is some sort of an altruist. I disagree. If siding with Caesar's Legion, you, the player, have the opportunity to eliminate Mr. House. Before you do, you can tell him you are doing it in the name of Caesar, to which he replies, slavery, the future of mankind. What have you done? In this man's last breath, 
he expresses disappointment for the fate of mankind, as if he had hoped it would turn out so much better. I'm not suggesting Mr. House is a good person. He cares little about the suffering of any individuals, but his redeeming quality is the way he sees humanity as a whole, like a disciplinary parent sees an unruly child, and all his efforts are done with the purpose of bettering humanity. I believe he actually does want to see the human race have a better future, and he believes himself to be the only one who can get them there. Now, I'm not oblivious to the weaknesses of Mr. House, since there are many. For example, he's only a man, and an irreplaceable one at that. If President Kimball is eliminated at Hoover Dam, it would be a loss for the NCR, but another president would be elected. If Caesar passes, Legatlanius will replace him and the Legion will continue. I've used the word immortal many times in this video, but it's really an exaggeration. Mr. House is not actually immortal, and if he's eliminated, that's it. The faction is gone. This is single-handedly the greatest weakness this faction faces. And it's not like Mr. House is even that difficult to reach. The courier can do it after bypassing a locked door and a few automated machines. Hardly a proper defense for a man who deems himself the savior of mankind. The same goes for his Securitrons. These robots are his army, but unlike the NCR and the Legion, he has a finite number of soldiers. If he doesn't find a way to build new robots, he will find himself fighting wear and rust more than enemy soldiers. Another criticism he gets is his inability to see how close Benny got to replacing him. Mr. House, the master of New Vegas, watched and predicted the actions of two super factions, but was unable to see that one of his underlings has hacked one of his Securitrons, is spying on him, and digging a tunnel beneath the Lucky 38 to break in and eliminate Mr. House. How many decades does Mr. House have left before someone manages to succeed at what Benny was so close to doing. Finally, there is one criticism that Mr. House gets that I disagree with. The biggest critics of Mr. House cite his destruction of the Brotherhood of Steel as his most condemning action, believing it to be less logical and more emotional reasoning. After all, the Brotherhood is capable of negotiation. They and Mr. House share more than one common enemy, and they can be convinced to fight besides the NCR at the Battle of Hoover Dam, which is the side Mr. House would prefer to see win. Critics say that if Mr. House were more logically motivated, he would see that the Brotherhood of Steel could be a potential ally of House, and he would seek to make an alliance. Except, Mr. House is not as short-sighted as the other factions may be. The NCR is willing to accept the Brotherhood's aid at the Battle of Hoover Dam because they're more focused on the short-term win. Mr. House is looking more long-term. Unlike Mr. House, the leaders of the Brotherhood of Steel are not immortal they will be replaced by a newer generation in time. And assuming they follow the codex of the current Brotherhood, they will undoubtedly see Mr. House with all his technology and robots as their primary enemy. Even if the chapter at the Mojave is not capable of overthrowing him, how long will it be until that's not true? Much like the Institute of the Commonwealth in Fallout 4, Mr. House may someday be greeted by a military airship like the Pridwin over the Mojave that was flagged to the location based on reports it got from the Mojave chapter, which is no doubt sending news about the technology they are finding to the elders to the west or east. All of Mr. House's ambitions involve advanced technology, and that guarantees the Brotherhood of Steel will take interest. Mr. House is not a perfect man, he's not infallible, and he's not even a very good person, but he may very well be the best hope for humanity. Now you, the player, may disagree with some of the points I've listed, or maybe you have some points I've missed. If so, you're fortunate because I'm a very small channel, so any comments you leave is guaranteed to be seen. I'd also appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed it, so that helps me know whether or not anyone even wants to see these videos. And with that, I thank you, the player, for your time.